How do you get stuff in a trust and how do you take stuff out of a trust? This is estate planning lawyer Michael Pevney and I create estate plans for California families. Please subscribe to this channel for more estate planning information and if you're a California resident, you can set up a time to meet with me for free. So when most of my clients I create a trust for, a revocable living trust, and that has a lot of advantages. It's got a lot of advantages over a will, mainly because you have a lot of control over what happens to all your stuff, uh, both while you're alive and for many years often after you pass away, and uh, it doesn't have to go through probate. And probate is this government-controlled asset distribution program where there's all these court dates and um, people that have to be nominated and letters that have to be sent out. And if you're dealing with the court system, especially in California, it's really slow and it takes a long time and it's a lot of hassle and it just really stinks. So uh, when we create a trust though, that's not, it, the trust is kind of like a bucket, okay? It's like an empty bucket. And a trust doesn't have any power unless you put things in the trust. And one of the common questions that I get though, because a service that I provide, something a lot of estate plan lawyers do, is after we create the trust, we help them put stuff in the trust. We either tell them how to do it, or when it comes to a house, either rental property or their primary home, we actually draw up a deed and we put the house inside of the trust. So basically it's a matter of, of drawing up a deed, getting all the paperwork right, filling out the right forms, going down to the county clerk's office wherever, for wherever that property is, and deeding that house from maybe you or you and your spouse as a married couple to you or you and your spouse as the trustees of this trust that we just get, that we just created. Now, oftentimes I'm asked, we don't own any real estate. So how do we buy real estate and get it inside the trust? Or in a little while, we're pr planning on upgrading homes or, um, you know, they say, that there's not really a such thing as a forever home, or sometimes you need to right size your home or downsize your home once the kids have, have left the nest, that kind of thing. So if you have a real estate purchase coming up in the future, I get that question, well, what do I do? Do I need to contact you? Do we need to write a new trust? And how do we do that? For most real estate, you do not. It's a pretty simple process. You basically need to tell the real estate agent and the escrow company that you have a trust say, listen, I've got a living trust and I wanna take title to this home in the trust. So that way there won't be any additional transactions and you won't take title to the house in your own name. You don't even necessarily need to contact a lawyer. Maybe you need to run it by him real, real quick with a quick email or something like that, but you wanna make sure that that property gets in that trust. At least for most of my clients, I wanna make sure that that property gets inside that living trust because if we've got property worth hundreds of thousands or even over a million dollars, we need to avoid that probate cost. So you buy the new house, you just say, I have a living trust, I want to take title to the home as trustees of my living trust. So you don't ever end up kind of holding that home, holding it outside of that bucket, it transfers straight into the bucket. And likewise, if you're selling your home, you basically tell the realtor, hey, I've got a living trust, we have complete control over it, and we want to sell this home from the trust. So you or you and your spouse as trustees of that trust simply sell the home from the trust. And the deed will basically say, my wife's name is Michael, so it'll say Michael and Heather, trustees of the Michael and Heather Family Trust, grant to John and Jane Doe, hopefully they have a trust and they're, they're buying the house in the name of the trust. So it shouldn't be that difficult of, um, of a thing to do. Now, sometimes you are gonna need to show the trust to the real estate people. And sometimes just a PDF will do. Sometimes there's even a shortened document called a certificate or certification of trust, which is basically an affidavit that you have signed. Usually it comes as part of a complete estate plan. It's something I always do for my clients. Uh, and, and we draw up this document. It basically says that a trust exists, that you have complete control over it, and that you can buy and sell property in and out of that trust. The advantage of this type of document is that it lets people know that a trust exists, that you have complete control over it, but uh, it, doesn't, it, it gives you more privacy. Um, people don't get to see exactly what is in the trust, what you have in the trust now, uh, where things are going after you pass away, what things are being left in trust. Maybe some people are getting cut out. Maybe some people are getting things that uh, you don't necessarily want it to be public knowledge. So that document, that certificate of trust is usually, usually good enough for a realtor in order to get, um, 
get property in and out of the trust. What about other stuff? Okay, so what about stuff like clothes or jewelry or watches or coins or stuff like that? One of the things that we do is we say we do an assignment of personal property, okay? So when we create a trust, we basically sign a document that says everything that I own, everything that's in my home, whether it be clothes, watches, jewelry, electronics, appliances, I hereby declare that this now belongs to the trust. And if that property doesn't have some sort of a title document associated with it, that's all you need to do. It's kind of almost like magic. Remember when uh, Michael Scott tried to declare bankruptcy uh, in, in the office, the TV show, and he just, he declared it. He just said, I declare bankruptcy. Well, it doesn't quite work like that when you declare bankruptcy. That's all an, an official thing. It all has to be done through the courts. But when you're dealing with a trust, you can kind of declare when you sign this document because you don't have to file it anywhere. It doesn't go with any government agency. Yeah, you need to hang on to it. And yes, people need to know where these things are, where your important estate planning documents are. But you basically declare and assign all of that property to that trust. And it's property that you own now or in the future will attain. So basically what I'm saying is getting stuff in the trust and taking stuff out of, of a trust is not difficult to do. You do not have to start from scratch by any means. And even if you wanted to change the terms of the trust, um, it's not that difficult to do. Typically, it's best to go to the lawyer that you helped, that helped you create the trust in the first place. You can do an amendment, uh, see if there's been any major life changes, any major changes in the law, and have a little discussion about that. And then you can decide what you want to change. Like if you want to actually cut somebody out, or if you want to give somebody some more money, or add a new person, or change some of the positions out. Um, but uh, to put things in and take things out of a trust, not a difficult thing to do, so long as we're talking about the right type of trust. Now, I am talking about a revocable living trust. When people talk about getting their trust done, getting their living trust done, yeah, they have a living trust. This is usually the type of trust that they're talking about. It's the type of trust that's most appropriate for a pretty large majority of my clients. So I'm talking about a revocable living trust. You can buy property into it, sell property out of it, and it's not a difficult thing to do. Remember, trust is like a bucket. Put stuff in the bucket, take stuff out of the bucket whenever you want to do that. So if you are interested in this or anything else related to estate planning, please subscribe to this channel. And if you'd like to set up a time to meet with me for free, you can click on the link in the description or go to ocestateplanlawyer.com. Thanks for watching.